Seeing as Apple have so lovingly decided to discontinue software support for most of their pre-2010 Macs, it's about time that the community did something about it, and indeed they have. The aim of this video is to show you how to install OS X or Mac OS Sierra on your outdated Mac using a simple workaround. On the list of things you'll need, it's basically just a pen drive in the computer. The pen drive doesn't need to be big, nor does it need to be fast, it needs to be at least 8 gigabytes. Uh, but there's no USB 3 requirement or anything. You also need a Mac. My Mac is a 2009, uh, mid 2009, 2.8 GHz Corti Duo Mac. Um, I'll actually be using my Mac Pro to create the pen drive, but there's no reason for you to do this. You want to start by plugging your pen drive into your Mac. You also, at this point, want to make sure that you've got a full system backup of whichever computer you're installing onto, because you just don't want to lose any data, it's too risky, and because this is a bit of a workaround, the chances of you messing something up are fairly high. So, sort yourself out with a backup, and we'll get on to the video. Once you're on your computer, you need three files, uh, not three files, sorry, two files, one of which is available in the description, the other one um, you have to download off the App Store, so you need the official Apple installer for Mac OS Sierra, then you also need this folder um, that I've attached in the description. Now there's one issue with this, since recording the video, the Mac OS Sierra downloader no longer works. Uh, which means that is not available in the description. However, the Sierra Patcher and the software update are both available. The Sierra Patcher is the main application that you'll use in order to create your installation media on your pen drive. That means you can then install it on your outdated Mac. The first proper step that you need to do is to go into Disk Utility and to locate the pen drive that uh, you want to use. Make sure you don't accident accidentally uh, erase one of your internal hard disks because that would be a shame. So you want to just hit erase at the top, uh, you can call it whatever I've just called mine USB, make sure it's an extended journal uh, when you format it, but as far as that goes that's fine. All you need to do then is wait for it to complete, once it's done you can click away and close out of disk utility. The next step is then to open or unzip uh, the macOS Sierra patcher which is simply done. That should give you an application file that you can then just open. It may ask you for an administrator password when you do this, but uh, I've had mixed experiences in installing it on different Macs. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Anyway, once you open the application, you're greeted by this interface. Uh, you want to click on the icon and then locate your official Apple installer, which you just want to open, as you can see. You want to make sure that it says successfully verified, uh, which means that it's basically just an official Apple installer and won't damage your hardware. Uh, that having been said, of course, there are always risks associated with this. The next step that you want to do is to select the installation drive or the volume. I've selected USB. If yours doesn't pop up, you can just click this little refresh symbol and hopefully it will. Then the next step is that you want to click start operation. At this point, you might be asked for an administrator password again, but just enter that and go ahead. And this is when the waiting game begins. This usually takes about half an hour to install or so. As you can see, my install completed without any problems at all, so the next step is just to safely eject the USB stick from your computer and unplug. At this point, I'd recommend plugging in the power to your MacBook just so you don't run out of charge. Then you want to plug in the USB stick, hit power on your MacBook, and hold down Alt. At this point, you should be boot greeted by the bootloader. You want to select the OS X base system, which is basically just your pen drive, and hit Enter. Booting from this volume might take a while, and then you just want to skip through the installer, agree to the license conditions until you get to here. At that point you want to hit Utilities and Access Disk Utility. Now this is a bit of a scary bit, you have to erase your internal drive, um, of course you can title it whatever you want, but you want to make sure that it's extended journaled, and that's basically it. Once you've erased your drive you can just leave the utility. Then you want to select the drive from the list. Hit continue and the operating system should install. I'll get back to you when it finishes. Once your computer finishes, you'll be it'll automatically reboot and you'll be greeted by this screen. It's nothing to worry about, you just want to reboot, go back into the bootloader and select the same volume again. Again, it'll take a while to boot. Once you've done that, you want to skip through again, and this time you want to access the uh, 
post-install utility, select your model of MacBook and select whichever options you feel are appropriate. Then select the vo installation volume, which in my case is Macintosh SSD, and then you want to hit patch. I clicked force cache rebuild, but you don't need to do that if you don't want to. Then you let the system rebuild the caches, and then it auto auto reboot automatically. You just want to follow through the standard Apple installation system. Of course, everyone's is different. Uh, I usually restore mine from a Time Machine backup, but of course you don't have to do that if you don't want to. After maybe 40 minutes or so of installing, I was greeted by this screen and was then promptly asked to log in. First login always takes a while, so I was ready for that. Then I was asked to sign in with my Apple ID, so I did that, which is all well and good. Uh, and just enabled everything and went through the installer as you'd expect. And then after, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes or so, I ended up on the desktop. And I now have a fully functional 2009 MacBook Pro running uh, OS Mac OS Sierra. It was still calculating the size of the hard disk. Uh, first impressions are iCloud Drive is annoying um, because it keeps wanting to sync my desktop even though I've told it I don't want that. Um, and at the moment I think my MacBook is regenerating its um, uh, the battery cache file because it seems to, it's saying 2 hours 57 minutes remaining and I'm at 95% but it's a brand new battery so it really oughtn't to be draining that fast nor was it uh, under El Capitan so we'll have to see um, what it's like but let me know, give me your thoughts and feelings in the comments and we'll go from there have a good day, bye bye